everybody and welcome uh, to our uh, seminar, which will be focused on promoting waste management for sustainable Arctic cities. Uh, I'm Jennifer Spence, and I'm the uh, newly minted director of the Arctic Initiative at Belfer Center's Harvard Kennedy School. Uh, and it's my pleasure uh, to open this session, but uh, really this is an opportunity from you, for you to hear from uh, many experts in this area. Um, I want to just mention that this will be recorded session um, and that we will have this posted and available for you uh, after. We will have it uh, available through the Belfer Center YouTube channel. Um, and we very much welcome your participation. I'm going to be handing the floor to the moderator, uh, Nadia Filimonova, who's a postdoctoral research fellow here at the Harvard Kennedy School's Arctic Initiative and a, an expert in this field. She's been doing some excellent work here uh, on this and, and has shown her passion for waste management. So I, I know that she will do an excellent job of introducing our speakers. But before I do that, I very much want to thank the Arctic Mayors Forum for co-organizing this event. Uh, and uh, it's been a real pleasure working with the Arctic Mayors Forum on several events recently. Uh, they're an important player in this space. Uh, and with that, I would like to hand the floor to Patty Bruns, who's the uh, Secretary General of the Arctic Mayors Forum, who will say a few opening words before we hand the floor to Nadia to get into the nitty gritty of waste management in Arctic cities. Thanks very much, Patty. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to um, everyone that's online. Um, thank you so much, Jen, for that introduction. It's always a pleasure for us to, to work with um, the Arctic Initiative at Harvard. Uh, we really value this partnership and hope that this is, you know, the second of many of these uh, types of events that we do. Um, one of the reasons that we decided to do uh, a webinar on this topic is that it's actually something that is really, it's really, really important for the resilience of our Arctic communities. And I was first exposed to the topic of, of waste management when I was the executive secretary of the ACAP working group, the Arctic Contaminants Action Program. And I see in the participants already that there are a few members of that, of that uh, working group online. So I'm really happy to see them here. But it was through that work um, and really through um, some of the experiences in um, Alaskan communities that really exposed uh, to me how important it is that, that we talk about these issues and that we come to common understandings about what the challenges are and how we can share not only the challenges, but the best practices out there to help solve some of these really, um, really, really important um, issues. So I really don't want to say much more except thank you for this opportunity um, at the Arctic Mayor's Forum. You know, we're really a platform for exchanging information across communities um, in the Arctic, east to west. Um, so I really encourage everybody online uh, to be very active in the Q&A and let's see where we go and hopefully uh, we do another one of these very soon, either on a deeper topic related to um, waste management or on something different. So I'm going to hand it over to our very, very skilled uh, moderator this evening. Um, over to you, Nadia. And again, thank you very much. Thank you, Jen, and thank you, Patty, for a very nice uh, introduction. And uh, as Jen mentioned, my special research interest is on understanding waste governance in urban Arctic, and it is a real pleasure and interest for me to moderate this session today. So solid waste management is a universal issue that affects every person in every single corner of our world. Improving our waste management is also closely connected to the issue of addressing climate change, as according to scientific uh, estimates, waste management is accounted for around 5% uh, percent of GHG emissions. While people are aware across the world with the problems of waste and cities globally have been dealing 
uh, with waste for, for, for a long time, there is still much action needed to address uh, this, uh, this problem. As uh, according to the World Bank report that was published in uh, 2018, uh, it is estimated that uh, waste uh, will uh, increase uh, up to 3.40 billion uh, tons in 2050. Uh, another scientific research states that uh, around 33% uh, of waste globally is managed not in an environmentally safe manner. And while cities across the globe are facing common challenges in, ad in addressing solid waste, uh, cities are also faced with unique uh, challenges in dealing with this issue. And improving uh, solid waste management is critically important uh, in the Arctic due to its fragile environment, severe climatic conditions, areas with permafrost and rapidly climate change that occurs in the Arctic uh, three to four times faster than in the rest of the globe. And therefore, Arctic cities uh, represent unique and excellent examples for the rest of the urban communities uh, to learn from how to uh, deal with uh, problems of solid waste management under severe uh, weather and climatic conditions and uh, rapidly uh, changing climate. So without further ado, I'm honored to uh, um, introduce uh, our pa panelists for today's discussion. Ernst Klusterman, Lead and Tromsø Municipalities Unit for Climate, Environment and Agriculture. Thank you, Ernst, for joining us today. Mark Spafford, Alaska Waste Group Leader at J Jacobs Engineering Group. Thank you, Mark, for joining us today. Nivi Struns, Managing Director at Communco Italic in Greenland. Thank you, Nivi, so much for joining us today. And finally, Yuka Teres, Senior Researcher and Norwegian Research Center. Thank you, Yuka, for joining us today for this uh, lovely discussion. So I would like to kick off um, uh, our panel with a question um, addressing what are the major uh, solid waste challenges that cities in the Arctic are facing and particularly your, your city is facing currently. And I think we'll start with Mark. Thank you, Mark. The floor is yours. Hey, uh, good morning and hello from Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, I think the the number one, I mean, there's a whole bunch of technical challenges that are associated with just collecting garbage and solid waste and recycling in general. Those are further, uh, you know, exacerbated when you get to a subarctic or an Arctic region, especially when you start talking about, you know, logistics and kind of like here in Alaska, for instance, you know, we're basically every every community is an island, you know, so whether you're talking about Anchorage and how we relate to like the rest of the United States, you know, like over 90 percent of our uh, materials here in the in the state are all shipped in by a, by a barge. And in fact, you know, 85, 80 percent of our recycling or the stuff that we collect for recycling has to get back hauled on a barge back to Seattle to go to a materials recovery facility to actually get sourced and separated and, you know, do all that good stuff. So we really don't have local markets. Logistics are like a big challenge, but probably something that's pretty common to like probably any solid waste entity, any utility organization, um, you know, especially in the United States right now is people. And so people are always kind of the issue. And it's, it's whether it's, you know, getting people to do the right thing or like in our case here in Alaska right now, especially uh, within the municipality of Anchorage because of a variety of factors, you know, making sure that you've got the staffing and that you've got the people and they have the training, you know, to drive the trucks around and pick up the garbage and recycling to, uh, you know, to drive in circles all day to like take the garbage from the transfer station out to the landfill and then making sure that you have, you know, the operators who are trained enough, you know, that can not only sit in the compactor and the bulldozers, that are on the working face at the landfill, but you know also some of the other stuff that goes on at landfills, like you know management of leachate, management of landfill gas, and making sure everybody's in compliance with all their you know permits and stuff like that. But it all comes back to you know making sure that you have the right people and the right organizational you know fundamentals you know to be able to train those people up in and, and make sure that they're. Uh, you know, doing their job as efficiently, having the tools that they need to do it, all that stuff. So for my opinion, as the department head, as a general manager here, um, you know, in, in Anchorage for, for six years, it was, it was always trying to make sure that we had the staffing 
uh, you know, to, to meet the minimum coverage requirements that we needed to pick up garbage and recycling and bury it out the landfill, as well as making sure that those people had, uh, you know, the training to do their jobs, as well as the training, because, you know, solid waste is, you know, one of the most dangerous, you know, industries in, in, in the world, as far as like, you know, fatalities and injuries. And so it's making sure that staff are doing things, uh, you know, in a safe and they've got the tools they need to do their job safely and making sure that they come home, you know, every day to go home to the dog or their family, you know, whatever it is. And, and, you know, and have all their faculties with them, which is another important thing, which, which is something that's not always, it's difficult to do all that you know, and get people to hire people and then make sure they're trained and, you know, all the other stuff that go make sure people are not fatigued, you know, because people were stressed out or, you know, they're not feeling well, accidents happen more so, and they're not as efficient and all that stuff. So trying to be compassionate and making sure that you're taking care of your people and having the people to, you know, get out there and drive the trucks and do the work that needs to be, you know, this important work that needs to be done every day. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for highlighting those very important issues of geographic location. That is one of the peculiarities when we talk about challenges in de dealing with waste management in the Arctic, but also the human component and labor that I think pops up also as a challenge in, in rural Alaska when we were um, when I was organizing a session at the Arctic Encounters uh, uh, conference. Thank you so much. Ernst, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you for that, and thank you for um, inviting us to this uh, this um, seminar. Uh, so I hope uh, I can contribute to uh, this in a good way. Uh, I'm from Tromsø in the north of Norway. It's also an Arctic city. It's not exactly the same, I think, as uh, Anchorage, uh, but uh, anyway, some things are the com comparable. What I'd like to highlight is that uh, we are uh, tempered by, uh, you can say, the, the, the Gulf Stream, which make our climate not very uh, hard. It's uh, a cold, long winter. The temperatures are not very low, but we have a lot of uh, snow, four to eight meters uh, in, in, in a year. And that, of course, gives uh, uh, some challenges in uh, collecting and logistics and so on. But I think that we manage that quite well. I think that our major uh, challenge is actually the amount of uh, garbage that we uh, uh, get. So the amount of, and the increasing amount of waste, I have to say. What we uh, see is that the uh, amount per citizen is uh, decreasing, but the total amount is increasing. And that is due to that we have a rising population, but also due to uh, an uh, increase in uh, tourism, which gives us a lot of people here, which also creates a, a lot of uh, waste. We have uh, perhaps the advantage that we are in, uh, actually, uh, what can I say, a relatively large and dense city in a sparsely populated uh, area. Uh, but we have a, a, a large uh, surrounding uh, part of a country that is very sparsely populated. And that's, of course, has also a, a lot of uh, lo logistic challenges. But um, what I also think is that uh, the, the composition of the waste is changing uh, quite a lot. It's not only uh, just uh, household waste and some uh, business waste, but it's also much increasing E&E &E, uh, waste, which uh, needs a, a special treatment. Um, some of the, 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 the waste is also more complex. So we have batteries, for example, that can uh, get on the fire, which gives a lot of problems. So it's that kind of things that we see a change in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, gar in the waste uh, types. Um, what is also so is that uh, landfill is not longer allowed. That will say we have to close our landfills and we have to uh, uh, process the waste that we have. So it's very important that we develop the technologies to uh, process this waste and uh, do the right things with it. And I think that we uh, come back to that in the next uh, part of the session, but it means that we have to, uh, 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 yeah, to innovate a lot. And that means also that you have to add uh, knowledge to the organizations here in uh, Tromsø. And another challenge I want to highlight is actually the old landfills and shore fields. We have uh, quite a lot of uh, old uh, fields, which are on the coastline. And uh, well, these have pollutions, uh, po pollution uh, problems uh, out to the sea. And uh, these are also in areas that we actually like to use for uh, uh, making the cities uh, more dense or have uh, other um, use for, for these areas. But what to do with it? You have to clean it, you have to remove it, it's very costly. So, uh, and you have to process it, of course. And well, that's also a big challenge, I think, in this area. 
So I, I think uh, for the, how we tackle this, we will come back in the next part. Uh, thank you, Ernst. Uh, thank you so much for uh, identifying additional challenges, especially when we talk about the, the need for technology and innovation and, and the cost of actually bringing everything to, to the Arctic. And uh, I would probably, you'll probably mention further on, but there's also like uh, harsh environmental conditions and, and uh, cold uh, conditions require different approach to dealing with waste management and, and applying different technologies than in the rest of the world. Thank you so much. Uh, I think Nive, the floor is yours now. Yes, thank you. Well, as mentioned before, uh, logistics is a big part of our uh, well challenges. Uh, we also have some infrastructural channel challenges because this municipality consists of four towns and eight settlements. We can't reach them all by ship. So we have to make some creative solutions to, to move solid waste with uh, snowmobiles, for example. Um, Four out of the five municipalities in Greenland have joined forces to establish two incinerators uh, living up to par with the EU standards of carbon emission and, and so forth. But only four of the five municipalities are in this. So it's a very costly business. Um, we also differ greatly depending on where we live in, in the production of solid waste. In the small settlements, they don't produce as much waste as they do in the urbanized areas. So it's very difficult to plan and to try and estimate how much solid waste is going to be uh, when I send the ships out to get it. Um, it's not, we're not able to compost anything because of the <laughs> permafrost and uh, we are also within a post-colonial setting, which makes the legitimacy of these decisions that are from national, from the national government, uh, it has been difficult to sell the idea of, of doing this uh, sustainably. Um, the polluter pays principle, which we are way, uh, we're doing now is very far from where we are now. So it's going to be a very long stretch plan to try and, and get to that number where the polluter actually pays for the waste that they produce. So right now we are trying to uh, legitimize the, the decisions that have been made from government and also from the EU. Uh, and that's really our biggest challenge right now. And then we're going to find a way with uh, the infrastructure. We're also going to find a way with uh, the fragmenting of, uh, we have a lot of sledge dogs, for example, which are, are considered dangerous waste. Uh, and we don't really know how to dispose of them as of now. Thank you. Thank you, Nivia. Thank you so much for bringing another perspective on the challenges of uh, geography and location of Arctic cities. And again, like the, the uniqueness, how you deal with the waste, for instance, located on permafrost areas. And of course, the bigger question, how to involve various stakeholders in being responsible for, uh, for dealing with waste management. Uh, Yuka, the floor is yours now. Thank you. Uh... Uh, I come from the city of Tromsø also, but from the research side, I'm representing the research organization NORSE, and uh, you see some something about Tromsø behind me at, at, the, at the screen, so you can imagine these waste collection vans going up and down those hills, so, so there is one part of the challenge we face in in North Norway and, and the, in the Arctic, how to collect the waste. And you also see that the, even though there is a lot of space, there isn't a lot of space. So, so also for the waste handling, where to put it and how to handle it in this Arctic environment. I work closely with the, the I would call it a waste management operator for the city of Tromsø. The name is Remix Company. And uh, also I work with uh, the Narvik company, Hoares. So 
my research work is quite applied and uh, has quite a lot of matchmaking also included. Uh, some of the challenges I found, find in this uh, Nordic Arctic waste management, uh, firstly, we have these uh, challenging Arctic conditions already mentioned, long distances and handling of waste. Secondly, I think this, uh, this uh, simple lack of critical mass of people and waste compared to bigger cities, that is the issue. And uh, it's so tough to do good economically sustainable solutions, not to talk about uh, social and environmental sustainability, but this economics of scale, this is all the time an issue. And uh, of course, you could think of uh, sending the waste out of uh, North Norway, which is also sometimes a solution, but not environmentally so optimal regarding the transport. And then I would echo what, what uh, Ernst already took up, or was it Mark, about this specific challenge uh, in, in today, which is this uh, handling of batteries. A bit surprisingly, this has become a, a bigger issue. And, uh, and when we carry these mobile phones and small things and we, we have these batteries, I think it's a problem for us all. It's, uh, we think it's only one tiny waste. But uh, when people uh, have these rechargeable lithium ion batteries, they show up more in garbage and sometimes they have as a chain reaction and they burst into flames. And improving fire safety is uh, suddenly quite high in the agenda. You can imagine, for example, insurance companies uh, with tough, tough negotiations. How can you guarantee that the consumers don't put batteries in the, in the wrong place? tough consumer behavior issue also. But I stop here. Thank you, Nanesha. Thank you, Yuka. Thank you so much. So we've, we've talked about challenges and we identify the uniqueness of challenges uh, um, for, for certain municipalities, but also we highlighted some of the common challenges in terms of small population and climatic condition, geographical uh, conditions. So my next question is knowing all those challenges, how you must, uh, what kind of policies and strategies your municipality is using to address those challenges and enhance your capacities in dealing with waste management? Probably this time we'll do the reverse and start with, with Yuka. Oh. Thank you, that, that, that works fine. Uh... I could pick up some issues. First, this uh, collaboration and clustering, maybe all already mentioned by Nibi. Not all, but uh, many of the actors have joined their forces in, in North Norway. And uh, there is a specific North Norway waste management cluster organized around the municipalities to tackle this uh, economics of scale, but also for the knowledge exchange and a learning project. There is actually a flagship project about 70 kilometers from Trumse, putting up a joint new modern biogas plant with, with this cluster initiative. Then I would say that uh, uh, partly against the uh, expectations, there is quite advanced technology. It's not a boring, boring sector, this waste management. It's filled with exciting new solutions. And, and I could mention maybe robotics, advanced sorting solutions, and, and City of Trumse and the, the Remix company are opening research legs, for example, to Finland for robotics and optical sorting. Then uh, I would also pick up a public procurement, which is something that we could do and North Norway municipalities are doing. Of course, there are limits. You have to uh, fill, in, fill the, the, the forms of, of uh, procurement. But, uh, but having said that, there are possibilities to use local suppliers in the subcontracting solutions. And I think it would get people engaged. And maybe a last example comes from, uh, from two weeks from here when University of Trumse announced a collaboration between the Remix company, the operator of the waste management in Trumse. So 
we have the knowledge exchange uh, and it is uh, at the university level and, uh, and people really, really think that we can push up uh, towards more advanced uh, technology, towards uh, talented people joining the waste management sector. And I think this is a good sign that we have the university industry collaboration in practice opening. Thank you. Thank you, Yuka, and thank you for telling the really great news about the established cooperation between the university and Remix. When I was in, in, in Tromsø doing my field work in 2020, I was really curious about what are the, the ways how like these two institutions are cooperating. So that, that that's really a pleasure for me to hear that. Anivi, the floor is yours. Well, we have the national strategy, Aufels Hennings Plan 2020 to 2031, and we have to work within those parameters to make our trans municipal plan, which I sp spoke of before with four municipalities working together for in one company to try and, and deal with this. Uh, we have our own municipal plan where we're trying to prepare for regulations for the private households and business solid fragmentation. Uh, but it's very difficult to balance the reality and the vision uh, because it, not everyone is going to enjoy fragmenting all of their solid waste in six or seven different piles. Uh, we are going to make local plans for all 12 uh, geographical locations in Kumul Galatalik for where we're going to place our landfills fills uh, in the future so it's it's easier to get to them um, we also need a lot of education of our labor and information accessibility of this labor so they can see how we we would they wish to or envision the fragmenting um, we don't necessarily have the the educational level uh, within the current labor force to to do this as of now. And yes, we there's a lot of feelings uh, when whenever we talk about living up to standards of Denmark. Uh, so the cultural and social legitimacy of this is going to be extremely important. Um, because uh, I know the different uh, generations in Greenland, uh, we have first started to engage the very young um, by inviting some, uh, what should I call them, some superheroes, environmental superheroes. Uh, and I, I've just brought a picture here. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, there's a superhero here standing with the mayor and I'm in, inside of the costume. Uh, and I went around to schools and daycares and tried to convince uh, this, the younger generation to start sorting their, uh, their solid waste. Thank you, Nive. Thank you for telling us one of the, like, I think it's a great example because the, there is always an issue how to involve public and citizens uh, into the the process of uh, waste uh, sorting because it's like they're the, where they're the main the main participants in in waste waste management. So thank you so much. I hope it could be a great example for other you know, for other municipalities. Uh, Ernst, I think the floor is. Some buttons, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, we also developed, of course, uh, strategies and, uh, and, po and policies. Uh, what I want to assess, uh, to emphasize is that we uh, anchored these in the, the UN's uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And I'd like, just like to mention them, that's 9, 11, 12, and 13. And that means that uh, you uh, based the, base it on industrial innovation and infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, and climate action. I think these four are quite important uh, uh, to keep in uh, in mind if you do this. Um, our policy is popularly uh, said is actually reduce, reuse, and recycle. It's easy to re re remember. And I think that uh, try to reduce uh, the, uh, the, the 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 amount of uh, waste that comes in is very important. But it's not easy, as Niv also said that uh, well, okay, uh, you have to change behavior. Then also in our uh, climate uh, and uh, envir environment and energy plan uh, in the municipality, we have an, uh, a, a for, uh, formulated a goal, and that is that we want to, um, what is it, recover 
65% of the material in uh, the household waste, because uh, we have uh, actually a, a different handling of household waste and business generated uh, waste, although there's an overlap. Um, but that's important. So what we, in a way, embrace is a circular, circular economy. Um, that means that you uh, should uh, do, some, do something uh, with the, the waste that comes in. And uh, um, all already mentioned it, optical sorting of the waste and sorting in general of, of the waste is very important in uh, yeah, how you handle it uh, on the road uh, further. So what we do, we uh, have for our household waste uh, an optical uh, uh, collection system. The people put it in uh, bags which are uh, marked with a color and uh, then there's an optical sorting and the bags are sorted uh, when they come in and these bags are then processed further. What you get then is uh, quite uh, good um, uh, organic or food uh, waste <clears throat> stream, which is then transported to compost uh, pr production, but also as uh, Yuka mentioned uh, for production of biogas. That's a new in initiative and this biogas is then used uh, for as fuel for uh, trucks, for example, for waste co collecting in the cities. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> um, then you have uh, uh, these fractions of uh, wood and metal and paper and uh, plastics and so on, which you also can reuse and recycle, but you have then to treat it in, an, uh, in a good way that you can either reuse it or that you will uh, decompose it and recycle it in another way. Uh, and another thing which is <clears throat> quite... Uh, um, important in terms is that we have an incineration of what we call uh, call rest waste, so the waste that you uh, uh, don't can process further, but that you can uh, burn or incinerate. And this uh, waste incineration is actually done almost in the same location as where we collect and uh, sort the uh, waste, and is then used for uh, district heating. And uh, yeah, that is. At the same time, also a little problem because it is the the, the biggest uh, single uh, climate uh, uh, emission point in the in 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 the city it stands for about fifteen percent of all CO two uh, e e emissions. The thing is that we also uh, burn or incinerate waste collected from the area around, so large parts of North Northern Norway. The advantage with this is that we uh, skip or um, delete what you want to call it a lot of truck loads uh, of uh, waste uh, which were transported to Sweden uh, before, uh, which uh, uh, spares, of course, also for a lot of uh, traffic, but also CO2 e emissions on transport. In the end, uh, you still have a, 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 a part of the, of the waste that have to transport it out, uh, either to further processing in uh, other parts of Scandinavia or Europe, or that um, you have to uh, yeah, to uh, transport to uh, uh, landfills or whatever, where you have these cer cer certified deposits uh, that can handle it in a good way, because that is of, uh, of an hazardous uh, waste. Um, yeah, well, that is ac ac actually the way how we uh, do this. And in this way, we uh, try to, of course, uh, uh, make the, 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 the waste as uh, useful as possible. So try to uh, uh, treat the waste as a resource also. Yeah. Thank you, Ern. Thank you for highlighting some of the examples that Tromsø is doing to treat uh, waste, yes, as, as a resource. I think they are they're very good examples. Uh, Mark, the floor is yours. Yeah, hey, that, that was all, that's really interesting to hear how you know, some of our European counterparts are doing stuff in the Arctic regions of the world. Uh, you know, I kind of feel I kind of feel bad here and I'm not trying to throw my uh, the state where I was, you know, where I grew up in and live and, you know, my kids are from. Uh, but, you know, here in Alaska, you know, we don't have a lot of the oversight and a lot of, you know, kind of the public emphasis as well as like the political emphasis or priorities to like you know, make goals to reduce waste here in the state, you know, just aren't a priority for, you know, any number of reasons, um, you know, just because other stuff takes priorities. Um, you know, there's a lot of, some people think there's a lot of space here and you can just dump garbage and take it out wherever. And so there hasn't really been, you know, a big effort from like a regulatory perspective or a state law perspective that says, 
you know, solid waste entities or the state as a whole, you know, will do one, two, three, four, and five in order to, you know, reduce the amount of waste or, you know, increase the amount of recycling that's, you know, getting shipped out or incentivizing people to really reduce the amount of garbage that they dispose of here. So that that's not really that's not really an option. So what what we're left with here in Alaska is depending on you know, whoever's running the particular solid waste entity and whatever kind of like political party, you know, is in, is in control of who's making decisions to do what with that public funding, you know, that kind of dictates, uh, you know, to a large degree, like what kind of, you know, reduction or what kind of programs that the municipalities or the different entities will offer to like incentivize people to, you know, throw less away at the landfill and do more diversion. And in fact, you know, here where it's at, at my house here in Alaska, just to give you perspective, it's like half as, it's half as much to, uh, to, to throw stuff away in a garbage can than it is to have a recycling container. So really from a, from like a fundamental, like cost perspective, there's no reason that people here in Alaska or in Anchorage specifically, um, you know, need to recycle anything because it's, it just costs more and you get like half the service. Um, and then, you know, that's further uh, exacerbated. I saw a comment on there and, you know, somebody was saying Anchorage isn't, um, you know, the Arctic. Um, and that's true, but there are lenses of permafrost here in town. I've seen them with my own eyes. So um, if that doesn't consider Arctic, I don't know what does. But uh, um, in rural Alaska, it's even more complex because you have less of the logistics because you're isolated. You're basically on an even smaller island than, say, here in Anchorage. And you really and and really the priorities from my experience based on working in rural Alaska haven't hasn't really been on solid waste. You know, the more fundamental kind of the, in the period or the, the pyramid of hierarchy, you know, water, wastewater and healthcare are like the big things, you know, and solid waste has always just been kind of like a, a background thing. And it's like, oh, yeah, we'll find an area in the rural community and we'll put a fence around it to keep the bears out. And, you know, we'll let, they, they'll they have to dig holes and put diesel in it and burn it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's really, it, there's really like no overarching regulations and not a, not a big like regulatory presence there to help, uh, you know, entities to do something different. And so I think from the, the, from the perspective of, you know, like we're, we're talking about Greenland with Nivea and, and like what, what we're doing there. And I think there's a lot of parallels between what is going on in Greenland versus like what we should be doing in rural Alaska, just because of like the same cultural challenges, logistical challenges. And we really need to do something different in this state if we really want to make an impact on, you know, rural Alaska, Alaska Native communities health, you know, and, and we just haven't, we're not quite there yet. I think with the influx of money that's coming into rural Alaska, there's a, there's an opportunity to do something different to really kind of improve, you know, the health impacts that are associated with, you know, solid waste in rural Alaska communities, but it's kind of like a, it's going to be baby steps up here. But I think, you know, if, if there was a politician willing to kind of take it upon themselves to make stuff like, you know, mandatory recycling, you know, here in Anchorage or, you know, set like a goal, like if a, if a, if a governor was able to, you know, set like a really tangible goal for how much they want waste reduced, I think people would follow, but sans that, you're just basically asking people to do the right thing. And if any of you have run a utility or, you know, try to try to explain to people how to recycle right or do the right thing, that that does that's not always the best way to do things if you're trying to make an impact on, you know, reducing the garbage and and actually beneficially reutilizing that material, you know, for a for a much better purpose, which, you know, solid waste has a lot of really cool things that we can do with it. It's just trying to uh, you know, explain to people the benefits and why it costs this much. And, you know, again, it comes back to the people. It's all about the people, whether it's people working or the people you have to sell an idea to, you know, the politicians who are making the decisions, you know, all that stuff. Thank you, Mark. Thank you actually for highlighting the actually the differences uh, between the different Arctic regions. And that's what we always think about like, yeah, what 
uh, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic, but actually what happens at the other parts of, of the country, of the Arctic regions is actually impacting the, uh, the, the um, both rural and urban uh, Arctic regions. So like, thank you for highlighting this, uh, this connection between different levels of, of, of government. Uh, I think we are running a little bit uh, closer to Q&A session. So uh, for the last question, I would like to really to be a kind of brief and then probably you can uh, share more uh, answering the questions. So my last uh, question is about, I think Mar Mark started uh, 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 sort of answering it. What are the policy changes or policy instruments can be used to actually contribute to enhancing your capacities to um, address those challenges and promote uh, waste management policies. And I think Mark will start with you now. Yeah, like from a really simple personal perspective, it's make, you know, here in Alaska specifically, like make reduction, make recycling, like incentivize it or make it so that people, you know, you have to have a recycling cart at your home. Because frankly, if we could do that here in Anchorage and make it mandatory, for everyone in the community to have recycling, you know, you'd reduce the amount of garbage going to the landfill by, you know, 15, 20% overnight. Um, and there's, a, again, there's a number of reasons for that. You know, unfortunately, some of them are political, other them, others are cost related, but, you know, having, having state and regulatory agencies and local entities here, you know, step up and have somebody to kind of take take it upon themselves to make those those source reduction or those waste reduction goals, you know, law to be able to make people that are actually running the utility, um, you know, to make it easier for them to do that, that would be a really easy, really quick, big win for us, at least here in Anchorage. Uh, thank you, Mark. Ernst? I can continue on that, and it's also partly an answer for, the, uh, for Mark then. Uh, because we have to uh, obey to the, the the regulations that are made by the EU, so that makes it quite simple. And the, the national re regulations are like these, uh, and I think that's not uh, not a problem. Uh, there's always something some people say are oh, a little bit too se se severe, but in general, it's very accepted. So uh, that makes it easy. Uh, then uh, I think uh, we also have our uh, municip municipal plans. Uh, to uh, be more sustainable and environmentally friendly. So, so that motivates also the, the, the waste com companies to have strategies and objectives to, uh, yeah, to do it even better than the, re the regulations uh, ask for. So that makes it uh, good. What you in the end have to do uh, to really tackle the problem, and then I come a little bit back also to what Nifi said in, in, in the beginning, that is a change in behavior. Uh, but also, uh, how can you uh, uh, influence the supply of all the ma materials that come to uh, everybody then, but of course, then also to the Arctic. And that is all the products that come, all the type of products, how are they are designed? Uh, do we need so many as these, but can we also make, uh, for example, the uh, wrap uh, or the, 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 what do you call it, the emballage for uh, uh, pro pro products? Can you make it simpler? Of they are complicated and recycling is very difficult. Well, there's a lot of things you can do there. But so it's both it's in policy, but it's also in design of products and it is in behavior of the people. So please. Thank you so much. And Nive, please. Uh, when I was first introduced to solid waste here in Komun uh, my engineer told me that uh, the production of waste, solid waste, was different greatly between the settlements and the, the cities because there was a lot of self-sufficiency in the settlements. So that's why they produce so much less. So what I'm trying to do, or I'm hoping to do, is make it a norm to go back to basics and try and, and find the roots uh, in, in this culturally accepted way and say, we, we have to do this because the mother of the sea, she, she stops sending us food when, when we tangle her hair, things like that. That's what I'm hoping we are going to use as instruments. But I also need something that's accessible information for the citizens, something that is not uh, my environment engineer jargon, but translated to citizen. How, how do we do this together, all of us? Because there's a lot of different levels of uh, 
talking about waste, solid waste. And, and I get it from both perspectives, but we need to make it simple. We need to make it obtainable for all the citizen. Um, I have also been thinking about a project in, I can't control what the citizens do, but I do have somewhat control of what we do in our institutions. So we are starting a diaper project where we, we change all the disposable diapers with uh, cloth diapers instead, because it will then produce a lot less um, waste. And our youth council just recently asked us for recycling rooms in the schools. And we're going to try and see if we can do that. Thank you, Nive. Uh, Yuka. Yes, to, to conclude the round, I also believe in incentives and, uh, and consumer behavior prioritized and also this youth new generation. One more example, in Trumse, close to the airport, they have opened a showroom or sustainability center to show people that this is not only obligatory must, but this, is a, this can be even exciting, almost fun, what, what we are doing with the waste. And I believe that young people grab this easier. And uh, I also uh, believe in Nordic and cross-border cooperation. So, as Ernst uh, referred to this new biogas plant, it is close to Finnish border. I think we just don't uh, have the idea or, or imagination to look across the borders. And there is a lot to do in, at least in Nordic Arctic, to do across the borders. Finally, these kind of events like this one for awareness raising uh, are highly of great importance. So thank you for this. Thank you so much. So now we're proceeding to a Q&A session and we have great questions from uh, the audience. So one question uh, to Nivi. Uh, my impression from visiting Greenland is that open burning is common in small settlements. And you mentioned four municipalities are working on a new plan. Will waste be transported from settlements to large cities to process in future? As of 2024, there is no open burning of uh, the landfills. So we are trying to, um, well, we're opening in two weeks uh, an incinerator in Nuuk uh, where four municipalities have, have joined forces to make an incinerator that is up to, to code. So right now we're just gathering and, and we can see it in all the settlements. So yeah, we, we, we have some problems right now. <laughs> okay, we have another question to all the participants. Uh, so the, uh, they were um, um, about the, uh, the platforms that you see as practitioners to learn from each other and share new ideas. So what could be the, the ways for um, municipal, municipal officials or experts to learn more about uh, best practices in waste management across the Arctic? I mean, this, <laughs> this is like, you know, even, even uh, just sitting here listening to, you know, each of, each of the panelists, you know, I mean, it's it, from a, from a personal perspective what I, of what I think is the best solution here in Anchorage in Alaska, for that matter, like, because, you know, the, I think that we can take components of it, like, and take garbage from rural Alaska, bring it here to Anchorage, take garbage from, like, other parts of Alaska, bring it here in Anchorage, build a, I, I don't like to say incinerator, because there's, like, a negative connotation with it here in the United States, I like to call it a mass burn, um, you know, but if you, if you could do it cheaper here in Anchorage, and, you know, reduce what's going into the landfill, reduce the contamination that's going out to, you know, from rural Alaska and kind of some of those unmanaged, um, you know, landfills and have that come to a place where it's managed. You know, you can take wastewater sludge, you can burn that to get energy. You can take, um, you know, you're creating renewable power, which offsets our natural gas shortage that we hear, we have here. You know, you can do stuff like destroy, you know, contaminated materials that have PFAS or PFOA, you know, some of those forever contaminants. You can do that with a you know, a high temperature process, you know, in addition, like you make the landfill here in Anchorage last another hundred years, <laughs> which, you know, there, Alaska's big, Anchorage is big, but there's not another spot for a landfill here. And so, 
you know, if we get to the point where we have to really truly like truck stuff out, you know, like everybody in the rest of the state experiences, we're going to be, you know, in trouble with our rates here. And so I, this is really good. It's good because kind of, it's not misery loves company, but it's good to hear what other people are doing because it, it kind of, it, it lends more credit to like what we want to do here in Alaska and, and how we're thinking. So like, this is great. It's been great meeting everybody and I'm, I'm happy to be part of it. I'm blessed to be part of it. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Anyone wants to add something? I'm yes, Atat you Yuka here. Uh, I am. Uh, I really like these open days of waste management plants, and I think they are they are highly important for the owners, customers, citizens. So, so I think uh, they are eye openers, and and they they build up the positive consumer behavior, and people can see in their own eyes what what's happening to our waste, and and also the 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 bad cases if we don't uh, do it in a proper way so so just uh, open your gates and doors more often yes Nivi, please no that was not for it. i'm sorry <laughs> that was a mistake <laughs> Um, we have another exciting question to to the whole panel. Um, I think that was Ernst who was mentioning uh, the increase of tourism and uh, problems that uh, with tourist wa uh, waste that mun Tromsø municipality has to deal with. So there is a question from the from the audience: so Why cannot you tax tourists as they do in Italy when entering a city? Uh, very good uh, proposal, or. Obsession. Uh, well, that's under this, this discussion. Uh, I don't know either why we don't do it, because I'm also quite used uh, to it from the country I'm uh, com co coming from. So um, I think also they have to pay for their uh, uh, yeah be, be, being here and uh, what they uh, uh, give us uh, waste and so on. So yes, it's a good proposal and we should do so. But it takes some time and the politicians and this and that. So, But I think it will happen. Thank you, Ernst Nivi. We we actually do tax uh, them now, uh, and we are in what is it? In two months, we're going to open a national park that we share with another municipality, where it's going to be even more costly to get in because of waste, for example. Because if there's waste left in there, it's going to be more costly for us to get it out. So um, we we have some tax initiatives on these things. Nadia, you're muted. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think there is a question to Mark about um, about um, the local leadership uh, in Anchorage and uh, how to persuade the local leadership uh, to do more cost-effective recycling. Uh, I think the... <laughs> That's, I'm getting all fidgety now, even more so than I am. I think how you make that, again, back to like the people thing is, is someone has to talk to, you know, the mayor or the assembly, you know, who are kind of the legislative and executive bodies here in Anchorage. Um, it would, you'd have to be able to get them to want to take that and uh, fight that battle or not fight the battle, but make it a priority for them to like pass a, you know, a law here in Anchors that would say that, you know, recycling is mandatory. And, you know, unfortunately, kind of in this hyper political world that we live in here in the United States and even here on here in Anchorage, you know, having someone to kind of step up and work with the assembly and the local administration on making that a priority, you know, is kind of somebody just has to do it. You know, you just you have to find the right person at the right time to be able to make something like that happen. And unfortunately, you know, and, and I can I can speak from this personally, depending on what the priority is, you know, you can only spend so much political capital. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you could have you can't ask them for 30 things, you know, you can only ask them for, 
you know, one or two big things at a time. And, you know, when you're dealing with kind of the political cycle every three to six years, you know, everything here in Anchorage gets kind of the deck gets reshuffled. If you don't do it in those like short time frames that you have with the consistent administration, assuming that they care about garbage and recycling and it's a priority to them, you know, that's kind of like what you're waiting on. So a lot of it is just waiting for the right kind of conditions to um, to appear and then take advantage of those. And that's difficult to do. And that and that's evident by the fact that it hasn't been done, <laughs> you know, for again, for all those reasons, like I said, like priorities of people, you know, nobody there that wants to do it to make it a priority or the, the politicians or local, you know, governing entity, you know, just having other priorities and it's not something that's important to them, but you have to make it somebody's priority. And so figuring that out is always the hard part. But again, that comes back to the first thing I said, it's always, you know, the hardest thing about anything in life is always managing the people and managing relationships. And once you can do that well, you know, it makes trying to pass all these different laws and get these other technical things uh, passed, you know, to make, you know, diversion from the landfill and better use of solid waste and more recycling, you know, reality. We're just not there yet in Alaska. We're trying though. Thank Good you, Mark. Question. Yeah. <laughs> that was from a lot, uh, from the citizen of Anchorage. Um, so we have another exciting question uh, from, for the whole panelists and that dealt with the actually including various stakeholders uh, in managing waste. And uh, the question is about how, what kind of models or how to involve investors or small businesses to invest in waste management and work with the municipality. So what kind of the ways how to, <laughs> to, in, uh, to work more with the public private, private partnerships in waste management? Maybe I try uh, to uh, make some answer. I'm not quite sure uh, how uh, that is working in, uh, in in our case. But what I see is that uh, the the um, municipality owned uh, um, renovation company. It's not the right word, but uh, the 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 waste uh, processor. Uh, they also participate in companies that do uh, uh, their parts in um, processing of waste. So. Yeah, may, may, maybe the Yuka uh, knows a little bit more about it, but um, um, I think that um, 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 the the company that we have are, is 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 quite keen on finding te technologies and companies that do uh, a good uh, a good job. So uh, and then it works vice versa. I can can imagine. Then also we have this uh, waste uh, cluster. And I think that there are also companies that uh, perhaps uh, can uh, offer the solutions for the problems uh, that the waste sector has. So, uh, yeah, maybe you can uh, say a little bit more. Maybe I can just just add that, uh, for example, just in Tromsø and North Norway, companies are really investing in R&D projects. For example, this optical sorting, uh, there is a company research institute in Oulu, uh, the, the place where they used to uh, plan uh, mobile phones and now they are also within the waste management and now this Remix company cooperates with them for optical sorting solutions. Though, so it's not reactive. I would call it proactive and uh, as I said in my speech against the probabilities. It's not uh, boring waiting for the others but it is uh, it is taking taking front runner stages, and I think it's exciting that we find this uh, proactive movement in, in North Norway in waste management. Thank you, Yuka. We have, I think, the last question for the last two remaining minutes, and I think it's a kind of a small question about uh, is actually how what can be the ways of how to. Uh, to pressure the industry to change and to be more in, involved, what was uh, discussed previously, uh, into the actually being more in, in involved uh, and uh, uh, in terms of shipping out by calling uh, waste from 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 those uh, areas, from the remote areas in the Arctic.
I, I think I'll answer that. I think it's money. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> you know, if there was, if there was more of an emphasis on like creating a tax or, you know, additional money onto, you know, what's coming into Alaska and what's going out to, you know, the rural communities that if there was like a funding source set up that would, you know, continually fund efforts. Like we, I, I should, you know, it's not all like gloom and doom in rural Alaska. I mean, there's depending on the community and who's working, you know, there's a lot of people trying to do what they can to like backhaul and get materials out of those communities. And again, it's just difficult because of the logistics here and the cost of shipping stuff to rural Alaska, as well as getting it out. Um, but if there was a continual set of funding, like something regular that was like, okay, well, we're going to set up this entity. It's going to do backhaul for set up backhaul for across the state and like do it in a, a manner that's consistent and repeatable for different communities. Then you would have like a real chance of success. And you're not trying to like, you know, get $5 million and dump it into like one place. Well, you know, you still got 226 other places that you've got to try to take care of. And so if there was a, a tax or a levy on those materials that weren't readily recyclable locally, which is like pretty much everything in rural Alaska, um, you know, I think that would go a long way towards like establishing a program that would help to reduce those materials that are accumulating in landfills and, you know, hazardous materials that are accumulating. But I think it it comes down with it comes down to like having a funding source and and even above that someone with a vision to make that happen but that's in my opinion you know given my 20 plus years of experience doing this here in Alaska it's like there has to be a recurring funding source and people have to be willing to pay that tax and someone has to be you know demanding that you know the entity who's producing that you know does that here in Alaska and also the foresight Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. And we came to the end of our very great and exciting discussion. I think there are more topics that need to be addressed. So I assume we'll have more seminars covering waste management in, in the Arctic. And I would really like to, again, thank all the participants and Patent Arctic Mayors Forum for co-convening this discussion. And for the audience, thank you so much for your questions and stay tuned because we'll have more exciting events. Thank you so much.